Today we are painting a mangler squig, which is basically a big ass squig. There's two of them in the kit. We're only going to be focusing on one so we don't get too repetitive. Uh, we already covered painting the squig hoppers. Uh, basically this is going to be just a big version of that. However, since we have a much larger surface area, that allows us to add a lot more detail to the model. We're going to begin with our light colored underbelly and sticking with our idea of purple tones to it. Going with a little purple for that as well. Heavy warm gray mixed with some violet red. I actually had to do this a couple times to find just the right color that I was happy with uh, because the violet red really tinted the warm gray quite a bit. So ended up with a mix of just a smallest drop of violet red in with the warm gray. After working up to straight warm gray, started adding some Panzer Aces Highlights Flesh to the mix. And this color is being used as a highlight. Also, I'm working this color up along the sides of the squig, the areas that are eventually going to be touching the red portions coming from the top down. Uh, using a, a warmer color here will help to blend our red in later, make it easier to blend in. I want purple undertones for this squig. Also, I want a fairly bright colored red moving into the orange colors. Uh, we're starting off with a mix of violet, red, and scarlet. And this is going over everything except for the areas that would touch the warm gray underbelly. I don't want to put a very dark color towards the underbelly area because it's going to just be much harder to cover later because we want those lighter colors that are going to be uh, more similar in tone to the warm gray uh, that we can thin uh, and stipple on in this case and use very thin layers to try to blend those two areas together. After highlighting the red, I decided I wanted a little bit more of a purple undertone in the recesses, so I went back with some thin violet red to glaze a little bit more of that color into the recesses. And actually I did this twice, uh, once again towards the end off camera, uh, because I still felt it needed a little bit more purple in the scheme. Here's a good example of things that we can do on a large special character that we normally don't want to do on a, uh, a unit uh, figure where we have to paint several of them. Um, adding some spots to the back area of the squig with some charred brown and glaze medium. The glaze medium is to soften the spots so they don't look, uh, well they look more blended into the skin.
And then to further blend in the spots, going back with some burnt cadmium red, once again with glaze medium, and stippling this color on, I think about five times I did, making sure the glaze medium is dry between each coat, to slowly blend those spots in so they look a bit more subtle. On to the mouth, and I'm surprised this actually came out on camera because I could barely see what I was painting at the time. Uh, yeah, big maw, but the jaw makes it really hard to get a brush in there properly. Uh, this is the one area I got very annoyed with just because I couldn't put the amount of detail I really wanted to in the mouth just because painting it was so completely awkward. When you're painting something like a giant mouth like this, there's generally two ways you can go about doing it. Uh, you could ramp up the highlights all the way up to white to give the idea of something that's very glossy and wet and highly reflective, or you could tone down the highlights and then apply a heavy gloss coat at the end. Generally, you don't wanna do both because then you're gonna have one of the highlights uh, contrasting or conflicting with the other highlight that's reflected by the light in the room. This case I am doing both, uh, but we're not going super high with the highlights, not going super high with contrast, and also we are not going to be putting a really heavy gloss on it at the end. Here's something very minor, but I think it's kind of important I wanted to point out when it comes to adding details to your models. I decided to add some red color to the bottom of the lower lip area, which really helps ties it into the, the reds on top. Now, if I didn't paint this area, I don't think anyone would say anything if I just went from the pink to the warm gray underbelly. But uh, painting it is just adding a little bit of extra detail that normally people wouldn't think about. Um, and that's kind of the step you start going through when you start increasing your painting, adding details where you don't necessarily need to paint details, but it adds a little bit of spark to the model. So try to paint details whenever you have the time and it really improves your skill. Originally, the tongue was going to be pretty much the same color as the mouth. However, that ended up being just way too much purple in that area of the same tone. Decided I want to go for something a bit more with a blue undertone to it instead, so I went with straight violet and then mixed in sunset red and pinks for the highlights. Um, the tongue is one of the areas I'm really not happy with. Uh, once again, just the getting a paintbrush into the mouth was extremely difficult, uh, and I just couldn't highlight it the way I really wanted to. Once again, here's a really good example of the difference between painting a unit of figures and one special character. The teeth here, we did a fairly quick base coat highlight wash job on the squid coppers, but here we want to add a lot more detail because we have much larger teeth and we have the space to do that. Uh, so we're gonna be adding some texture to these teeth.
We are painting striations on our teeth texture, so we have our paint a little bit thicker than normal. And basically all we are doing is painting lines. Uh, start at the base of the tooth, work our way towards the tip. As the uh, tooth, the object we're painting narrows, so all of our lines come together. And then we go on to the next color and repeat the process slightly higher up to the t on the tooth uh, until we finally reach the tip. So it's very repetitive, but it's very striking, uh, adds a lot of detail to this very flat surface. And then we finish up by adding some Agrax Earth Shade to the base of the tooth so we get a nice distinct area between the tooth and the gums. I also applied this to the tongue as well, figuring what the heck, it couldn't make it look any worse at this point. All the spikes on the back are painted in the same manner as the teeth, uh, however they are much smaller so we're using less layers. Also obviously we want to use different colors here because we don't want them to look exactly like the teeth. So did my best to make them a little bit more yellow ochre in color and not as uh, light in color. Last major thing to cover in this video is the leather straps. And once again, we are using texture to paint these, in this case, stippling, to give us that nice worn leather look. And once again, it's important to do this type of work on a larger model, on a, a very small leather strap on a tiny 28 millimeter sized figure. Uh, you can get away with just using regular uh, paint for a leather strap, but this is these are big large straps So we want to do what we can to add extra detail to these large flat surface areas And they're big enough for us to easily do that And with that, we are done with our mangler squigs, or squids, since we only covered one. But anyway, it's done. Uh, if you're wondering why I didn't cover X, Y, or Z, that's probably because it's already covered in the squig hopper video. Uh, the goblins uh, and the black and the metal, it's all painted the exact same way as I did in that video. Uh, it just painted a little bit more carefully and with more detail here. but. Virtually it's all the same, I didn't want to get too repetitive in this video. I did mention about gloss coating the mouth previously, and I did put a semi-gloss coat over the mouth once, the, once I flat varnished the entire model. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of putting gloss coats on small areas of model for reasons that I already stated. It, uh, 
conflicts with the highlights that you're painting. Uh, but in this case, it's such a huge area. I thought it needed a little bit of something. So that's why I just went with the semi-gloss on its own. So I think that just about covers it for the Gloom Spite Gits. I'm still calling them goblins. Uh, but I think we covered everything squig related in that army. So we're going to be moving on to painting something else very soon. May have one or two more videos in this faction coming out at some point. But uh, we'll see when that happens. I don't know yet. I don't know what I'm doing. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Take a look at this guy. Go ahead, take a good long look. You see, they just didn't care.